Isang magandang araw sa inyong lahat sa video ito tayo ay magresolve ng isang problem patungkol sa isang vapor compression cycle na nag-undergo ng wet compression. So basahin muna natin yung kabuuan ng ating problem. A vapor compression system using R134A is to be operated at a pressure of 0.4 MPa and 1 MPa. Find the COP if the system is using isentropic wet compression. Okay, so alam natin na ito ang itsura ng schematic diagram ng ating system. Parehas lang siya sa SVCC. Ang magkakaroon ng kaibahan dito ay ang pH diagram. So, before we begin constructing the pH diagram, magandang lagyan muna natin ng label yung ating state. So, para malinaw, dapat may label. So, let's say this is our state 1 and this is our state 2. And then state 3 at the outlet of the condenser. And finally, state 4 at the outlet of the expansion valve and the inlet of the evaporator. So ngayon, alam natin na ang kaibahan nito sa mga ating previous problem sa SVCC ay yung inlet ng compressor ay saturated mixture. Samantalang yung outlet nito ay saturated vapor. So sige, i-construct natin ang ating pH diagram. Dito meron tayong 0.4 MPa. Samantalang dito sa taas ay meron tayong 1.0 megapascal. Ang state 1 natin ay saturated mixture. So let's say somewhere here. And ang state 2 natin na coinciding sa state 2S ay saturated vapor. So bakit natin nasabing coinciding yung state 2 at state 2S? Dahil sabi dito gumagamit tayo ng isentropic wet compression. That means that... The compressor efficiency is 100%, which also means that H2 is basically equal to H2S. So essentially, state 2 and state 2S are the same. So let's proceed. This one undergoes isentropic wet compression. And then from state 2 to 3, meron tayong isobaric heat rejection. So our state 3 is somewhere here. Hindi mo mababago yung assumption natin dito. So this is going to be a horizontal line. From state 2 to state 3. So, ang araw niyan ay pa ganun. Samantalang from state 3 to state 4, we know that it's an isentalpic throttling. So, it's just vertically downward. I'm gonna do my best to make it vertical. There you go. And finally, we have isobaric heat absorption from, process, uh, from state 4 to state 1. So, horizontal line. So, simulan natin sa pag-dissect kung ano yung hinahanap ng ating problem. Sabi dito, we are looking for the COP. So, balikan natin ang formula ng COP. We know that this is just equal to the refrigerating capacity divided by the net power input, which in this case is just the power consumed by the compressor. Furthermore, we can express these in terms of enthalpies and mass flows. So we have m dot at the evaporator multiplied by the enthalpy change in the evaporator, which is basically H1 minus H4, divided by the power input in the compressor, which is basically mass flow at the compressor multiplied by H2 minus H1. Alam natin yung mass na nagpo-flow dito sa isang buong system ay isa lang, m dot. So, these two mass flows will just cancel out. So, we are left with three different enthalpies that we are about to solve. See, H1, H2, and H4. Ngayon, kaya ba natin itong simulan sa state 1? State 1 is somewhere here, although we know that it is saturated mixture We don't know the quality of this one. So clearly, hindi pa fully defined si state 1. Ang alam lang natin sa kanya ay ang pressure at ang fact na ito ay saturated mixture. But we don't know how to quantify how saturated a mixture it is. So perhaps it's good to start in state 2. Okay? So sulat natin, state 2 or state 2S. Doesn't matter kasi parehas lang naman sila. So we know that the quality here is equal to 1 because it's saturated vapor. And we also know that the pressure here is 1 megapascal. So we have P1 equals 1 MPa. Pwede nating sabihin na H2 is basically equal to the 
vapor enthalpy at 1 megapascal. Also, we have S2 is equal to Sg, which is the vapor enthalpy at vapor entropy rather at 1 megapascal. So, para makuha si H2 at Hg, ang pwede natin gawin ay kumonsulta na lang tayo sa ating thermodynamic tables or refrigerant tables. We, can, we have the choice to interpolate here in the saturated mixture table, but that will be a more difficult way of doing so. So ang gawin natin, pumunta tayo sa superheated tables kung saan given yung iba't ibang saturated liquid and saturated vapor parameters. We have the pressure that is equal to 1 megapascal, therefore P1 is over here. H1 is equal to 419.31 and S... That's going to be H2 rather, not H1. And also, S2 is going to be 1.7117. Okay, let's just copy those values. 419.31 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is going to be 1.7117 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So, let's proceed with the next state. Uh, after natin isolve si state 2, alam natin na itong line na ito ay isentropic. So, what we can do here is to say that st in state 1, S1 is also going to be equal to S2 or S2S. So also, S2 is 1.7117 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. I'm not gonna write the unit anymore. Because I already indicated it here. Also, alam natin yung pressure, pressure at state 1 is equal to 0.4 megapascal. Ang mahalagang mahuwa natin dito ay yung enthalpy. So, meron na tayong isang enthalpy. If we go back to our formula, we already know H2. H1, sandali na lang, malalaman na natin siya. Since it is a saturated mixture, Kailangan nating malaman yung quality upang masolve natin si enthalpy. But the problem is we don't know it yet as of the moment. And the good thing is, alam natin na yung entropy at state 1 is basically the liquid entropy at state 1 plus the quality at state 1 multiplied to the difference of the vapor and the liquid enthalpies. Okay? And these parameters can be known using our thermodynamic tables. This one, alam natin, it's 1.7117. So, we can just use our calculator to solve for x1. Okay, let's consult our thermodynamic table. Let's write it first here. 1.7117 equals SF1. So, SF1 is basically what? Let's go to our superheated table at a pressure of 0.4 megapascal. We have our SF that is equal to 1.0432 and our SG that is equal to 1.7229. Okay, let's input it in our calculator. We have 1.7117 equals 1.0432 32 plus x1, which I'm just going to input it as, as x, times 1.7229 minus 1.0432. And let's shift solve the way out of it. Since we know that our quality is from 0 to 1, mag input lang tayo ng number somewhere in between. Kahit alin. We now have x1 that is equal to 0 0.9835. We can now solve the enthalpy at state 1. We have H1 equals HF at 1. The saturated liquid enthalpy plus again the quality multiplied by HG1 which is the vapor enthalpy minus HF1. We already know this. These are basically from your thermodynamic tables or refrigerant tables. Therefore, we can now solve for H1. Okay, basis sa ating table, our pressure is 0 0.4 MPa, HF1 is 212.08, and HG1 is 403.80. So, let's just write them down. Okay, so we can now input this in our calculator in order to finally find the numerical value of this enthalpy. So 
So we have 400.63662. So bahala kayo kung gusto niyo siyang i-round off to the, ne- to the nearest tens digit but I'm gonna write everything kasi hindi naman siya ganun kahaba. Going back to our original formula, we know H1 already, so it's a matter of solving for H4. Let's put our state 3 over here. So according to our pH diagram, state 3 has a quality of 0 because it's saturated liquid and the pressure is 1 megapascal. So P3 is equal to 1 MPa. And we can now say that H3 is basically HF at 1 megapascal. HF is your saturated liquid enthalpy. We can just use our refrigerant table at 1 megapascal. We have 255.44 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, and we know that this is also going to be equal to H4 because it's an isenthalpic throttling process. Now that we know all the enthalpies, nothing is stopping us from calculating the COP in wet compression. So, going back to our original formula, we have H1 minus H4. So, we know that H1 from our previous calculations is equal to 400.63662 minus H4, which is going to be equal to 255.44 divided by H2, which is 419.31 minus 400.63662. One last step before ending this problem, let's type this in our calculator. So our COP is around 7.78. So this is our final answer. Again, if you have questions, you can comment down below. Thank you and have a wonderful day.